All right, today we're going to go through the Honors Algebra 2 Chapter 13 Finals Review Guide. So now, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, parabolas. And this, the first one we're going to do is a left and right parabola that is already in vertex form. So the things you have to answer are the vertex, the focus, the directrix, the length of the lattice rectum, and... Uh, direction it used to used to be up there, but I will put that on here as well. Vertex. The vertex occurs at negative three for x and negative one for y. Notice things are backwards. So negative three, the y value is inside the parentheses, and the x value is outside of the parentheses. Next, we are going to need, in this case, directrix. Axis of symmetry is also a question that is not on here. So then we have a y equals negative 1, axis of symmetry. I'm surprised that's not up there. Direction. This is a left and right parabola, so this is the right. The other three questions require p. p is equal to 1 over 4a. And so in this case, the p value is 1 eighth. Now, why that's important, and I'm going to go ahead and go over here and graph this. Negative 3, negative 1 is the vertex, and my board is off just a little bit. Then it goes to the right, so I'm going to do the counting principle up 1, to the right 2, up 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so there's my parabola. So now let's talk about... The focus, you are going to go to the right, 1 eighth. So you're talking about the point negative 2 and 7 eighths, negative 1. Then the directrix is an up and down, x equals, and then negative 3 and 1 eighth. And the length of the lattice rectum is always 4p, so the length of the lattice rectum is a half. This time, we actually have to put it in vertex form, so we need to complete the square. So a little bit of work over here. I need to take out a negative one-third out of both x terms. Then, completing the square, which we will need to complete the square in all of these. Half of 6 would be 3 squared, so we're 9. And on the other side, we're going to take 9 times negative one-third, so that's negative 3. And so that completes the square. Adding 3, I get 0. So the vertex is at the point negative 3, 0. The axis of symmetry, which for some reason isn't on here, is x is equal to negative 3. The direction, which again isn't on here, goes down. Now for the problems that require p. You need the focus, the directrix, and the length of the lattice rectum. The focus... We have to find P. P is equal to 1 over 4A. So in this case, I'm going to put negative 1 third. And so the P value in this case is uh, 3 fourths. So going back to my graph here, negative 3, 0. Um, graphing this, I'm going to go over 3 and down 9A. 1, 2, 3. 1, one, two, three, so there. Graphing calculators could be a big assistance on those types of questions on how to graph. The p-value uh, means that it, the focus point is three-fourths away from the vertex. So we're talking about the negative three, negative three-fourths, and y equals positive three-fourths, and that makes the length of the lattice rectum 4p, so you're talking about three-fourths times four. So there's your parabolas. Okay, lots of questions associated with the parabola. And so on the test, they might ask you one of those questions on the final exam. So they might give you this and then say, what is the focus point? Or what is the directrix? Or what is the axis of symmetry? Next one is a circle. Circle is the easiest shape that we have. So all we have to do is complete the square with both x and y. So now, completing the square with the x, take half of 8, which is 4, quantity squared, add that to both sides. That completes the square for x. Do the same with y now, add uh, 3 squared to both sides, and that completes the square for y. Adding up everything on the other side, you get 9. So that means the center is at 4, negative 3. The radius is 3. This is r squared. Graphing. 4, negative 3 is the center, left 3, right 3, 
down three, up three, and that makes a circle. Already, in, this is an ellipse in standard form for an elliptical shape. The, vert, the center is at negative four, two. Major axis, minor axis. Um, I'm going to go over here and graph it first. That may make more sense to people. Negative four, positive two is the center. The under the X is a four. So that means I go left four and, excuse me, left two and right two. Up and down, one, two, three, four, five. So it's the square root of those values. And that creates your elliptical shape. What's longer is more important. So the major axis, which you went up and down, five would be 10. The minor axis, which you went left and right two, would be four. Focus points. In order to get the focus points, you need C. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. A squared is 25. B squared is 4. So you're talking about C equaling the square root of 21. So now from the center, remember the major axis was up and down. So from the center, the Y value up and down the square root of 21. This is also an elliptical shape, but this time you actually have to complete the square. So let's get the X's together first, the Y's together. Now, take out the A value. Then, half of 6 would be 3 squared. Multiply that times the number out in front. So 9 times is an additional 45 over there. So I get 5x minus 3 quantity squared. Next one, I need to take a 10 out. Half of 2 would be 1 squared times the number outside would be an additional 10. So I have 10 y plus 1 quantity squared equals 100. So adding all those up over there. Divide by 100. And now we are going to be in standard form. So this would be 20. This would be 10. So now I should be able to answer all my questions and be able to graph this. The center is the point 3, negative 1. Um, I'm going to go over here and graph it and then go from there. So 3, negative 1 on the graph. The under the x is a 20. The square root of 20 is roughly over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a little over. Up and down the square root of 10. 2, 3 and a little over 3. A little over 3. So there's our elliptical shape. So now the major axis, okay, the longer of the two. So remember, we went the square root of 20 to the left and square root of 20 to the right, so that's two square roots of 20. Now, that's not very nice. Um, so we're going to go ahead and simplify that to being four square roots of five. Minor axis, two square roots of 10. And then foci. Foci require c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So I end up getting the square root of square root of 10. And so now, remember, the major axis is the longer of the two. The x value is longer. So 3 plus and minus the square root of 10, negative 1, are the two foci points. Hyperbola is the last shape that we are going to do. Uh, this was already in form. Now, be careful. The y value comes first and the x value comes second. So the center is at negative 4 for x, 2 for y. Okay, so going over here to graph this first, negative 4, positive 2 is the center. I'm going to go up and down 2. That's what's under y. I'm going to left and right 3. Now, what matters in an elliptical shape is the longer value or the larger value. What matters in this is what comes first. The y value comes first. So this hyperbola is going to be a vertical hyperbola, up and down, along the asymptotes, touching the box. And I know my board is off here just a little bit, so my first one wasn't real great there. But touching the box, those are the two vertice points is where that touches the box. So when you're asking about vertice points, you went up and down two. So the points negative four plus and minus two, or if you wrote that out, you're talking about two, negative two, two. Oops, let me try this again. I have messed that up totally. Stop, stop, stop. Up and down two. So you're talking about on the y-axis, 
negative 4, 2, plus and minus 2. So negative 4, 0, and negative 4, 4. I apologize for that. Up and down, because the y value comes first, the y value is more important, and so you're adding up and down. Next, uh, the equation of the asymptotes uh, could be the next one. Equation of the asymptotes, just like you would when you were in Algebra 1 and you had to graph a line, you went uh, the equation of a line, y minus the y of the center, x minus the x of the center, and now it's about finding slope. The slope is rise over run, so since you went up and down 2, left and right 3, that has a slope of plus and minus 2 thirds. And the last thing I want to talk about is foci. Foci requires c again, a squared plus b squared. So you're talking about 9 plus 4, which is 13. Now the square root of 13 is your c value. Remember, this hyperbola went up and down, so negative 4, 2, plus and minus, square root of 13 on the y would be the answer. Last problem that we are going to do today involves a hyperbola and that is not already in standard form. So again, this can be as the most complicated of the shapes. Let's complete the square. So notice I'm going to put the y first. The reason I'm going to put the y first is because the y value was positive and the x second because the x value was negative equals 36. All right, so there's some work to be done here. I'm going to have to take a 3 out of the first two. Half of 4 would be 2 squared times the number out in front. I'm going to add 12 to the other side, and that completes my square for y. I'm going to take a negative 4 out. This gets a little bit more complicated. Half of 6 would be 3 squared times a negative 9 makes a negative 36 over on the other side. x minus 3 quantity squared equals 12. Dividing through by 12 squared over 4, x minus 3 squared over 3 equals 1. So here is standard form for a hyperbola. Uh, scrolling down here just a little bit to give myself some space. Center. The x value of the center is 3. The y value of the center is 2. I'm sorry, negative 2 for the center. Um, I'm going to graph it now. I always think the graph helps look at this, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the graph down here just a little bit for myself. 3, negative 2. I'm going to go up and down 2, because that's what the y value, under the y value. I'm going to go left and right, the square root of 3, so not quite 2 both directions. Then I'm going to draw in my asymptotes. Remember, y comes first, so that means this is an up and down hyperbola. This is where a little bit of color might be effective for some of you. So there is the vertical hyperbola. And so now i got to answer a bunch of questions here. Uh, the vertices, notice that you went up and down 2. So on, on the y, you went plus and minus 2. So we're talking about 3, 0, and 3, negative 4 are your two vertice points. Uh, equation of the asymptotes, y plus 2 equals plus and minus. We'll get to that in just a second. x minus 3, that's the center. So the y value of the center, it's always y minus the y value and x minus the x value of the center. And now let's talk about slope. We went up and down 2, left and right, square root of 3. Well, that's no good because now I have to rationalize my slope to get my final answer for the equation of the asymptotes. And the last thing I have to talk about is the foci. Foci requires c is a squared plus b squared. So 4 plus 3 is 7. So the square root of 7 is my c value. And so the foci, remember, it, the foci goes towards the y value because it went up and down. So 3, negative 2, plus and minus the square root of 7. I know I went through a lot of information there pretty quickly. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to myself or Mr. Bone. And best of luck on the final exam.